In this video, I'll give a brief introduction to tracing with SNT. Let's get started. So first, you want to make sure you have Fiji open, and it's always a good idea to make sure your Fiji is up to date. And the way to do that is to go to the Help menu, then go down to Update. And once you're all up to date, we can go ahead and open the SNT plugin. And one way to do that is to go through the Plugins menu, navigate down to the Neuroanatomy toolbox, and select SNT. Alternatively, if you don't want to go through the menu structure, you can simply press the L key, which will bring up the command finder, and then you can just type in SNT and click Run. A menu will appear, which will let you specify some initial parameters, and if you hover your cursor over them, a tooltip with additional information will be displayed. So the first parameter is the image you want to trace on, and if you already had an image open in Fiji, you'd be able to choose that one in the drop-down menu. But if you want to choose a different image, you could just go to Browse, select the image you want, press open. And if you have a reconstruction file you want to import over the image, you would be able to do that here. But we won't be doing that in this tutorial since we're just going to trace one from scratch. And then the user interface parameter specifies which canvas style you want to use. And there are two options. One is the three pane view, which has the X, Y, Z, Y, and X, Z views. But if you want to save memory and also screen space, you would be able to choose the only X, Y view. We're going to go with the three pane view. And if you're tracing on a multi-channel image, you would also be able to select which channel you want to trace on. But since we're tracing on a single channel image, we're just going to leave it as one. And it's important to note that these parameters can be changed later on. So select the parameters you want and press OK. And then the interface will appear. On the left, we have a variety of controls. And like before, if you hover your cursor over them, a tooltip will be displayed. In the middle here, we have our three views. And the big one is the XY view. The one on the bottom is XZ, the one on the right is YZ, and to scroll through the image stack, all you have to do is scroll the mouse wheel, or use these sliders on the bottom, and you can do this for all three views. And if you hold shift while moving your cursor over the image, you'll see that the three views are synchronized in their position. And on the right here, we have our path manager, which will display a summary of the structures we've chased out so far, and it displays them in a tree structure. Okay, so before we start tracing, it's generally a good idea to turn on the Hessian-based analysis, which will improve the quality and efficiency of the A-star search algorithm by filtering the image for tubular structures. And there are only two parameters that we need to specify. One is the sigma, which is the standard deviation of the Gaussian kernel, which smooths the image prior to the tubeness filtering. The second is the maximum, which corresponds to the maximum pixel intensity on the tubeness image beyond which the cost function of the A-star search is minimized. And there are two ways to choose these parameters. One is manually, if you already have a quantitative understanding of the image, this works. But for most people, it's generally easier and more intuitive to choose these settings visually. And if you select that option, it will ask you to click on a representative region in the image that has meaningful structure. So scroll through and find a region that has some interesting branching going on and click in the middle of it. And you'll see this palette being generated, which shows increasing values of sigma applied to that portion of the image. A larger value of sigma will act as a low-pass filter and will only consider larger scale structure. A smaller value of sigma is more sensitive to local shape characteristics, but is also more sensitive to noise. So it's generally safe to choose a value somewhere near the middle. And if you click that square, it'll turn green, meaning that that value has been selected. And you can also experiment with moving the adjusted max to find a setting that captures the structures you're interested in. But make sure it's not oversaturated or undersaturated, as this can negatively affect the quality of the result. And it's usually safe to choose the default value. So once you choose your parameters, click Apply, and it'll run a Gaussian convolution over the image. And once that's done, all of the pathfinding will occur on the computed tubeness image. Okay, so now we're ready to begin tracing. So if you look at the top of the dialog here, it's asking us to click somewhere to start a new path. So let's find where we want to place our first point. And then just click there in the image. And you'll see that a little circle has been created, indicating the start point of a new path. And if you look back up here, it's asking us to select a point further along the structure. So let's find where we want to place our second point. Let's say there. If you click, you'll see that the A-star algorithm has found a path between those two points, 
and you can just scroll along it and see if it looks correct to you. And if it does not look correct, you can press N on the keyboard or no up here and that will discard that temporary segment, but it'll keep the first point so we can just try again in a different spot. Just click again. And I think that path looks correct to me, so I'm gonna press Y on the keyboard or yes up here and that will confirm that temporary segment. So we can just continue along in this fashion, just place points, then confirm or deny the temporary segments until you reach an endpoint. And then once you do reach an endpoint, you can finish the path by pressing F on the keyboard or finish up here. And it will add that path to the path manager and select it, turning it green. I'm just gonna show you how to select paths. I'm gonna deselect it by just clicking somewhere in the path manager. You'll see that it's turned purple, which means that it's deselected. And to select paths, you can either click on them in the path manager or you can press the G key while your cursor is near the path and it will select the nearest path. Now that we've finished our primary path, we can go ahead and create a branch point. So in order to create a branch, make sure the path that you wanna branch off of is selected. Then all you have to do is hold down the Alt and Shift keys at the same time. And if you move your cursor along the path, you'll see that it snaps to the nearest node on the path and will let you create a fork point there. So find where you want to create your branch point and click. And you'll see like before, the blue node has been created and then we can just continue along as usual. Just create new points and then confirm or deny the temporary segments until you reach an endpoint where you can finish the path. And you'll see that the path has been selected, added to the path manager, and that this new branch path is a child of the primary path. And this is how the branching system works. The branch path will always be a child of the path where you created the fork point from. All right, so that should give you enough information to start doing some basic tracing. And there's just one more thing I wanna go over in this video, and that is how to save your traces files. To do that, all you have to do is go to the file menu, go to save traces. And then what I like to do is use the same file name as the image, and then just add an underscore. And once you click save, it'll automatically add traces to the end of this file name. So just do that. And I'll show you how that works. Just go to load traces and you'll see that it added traces to the file name. So you can just load it back in. You'll see this is our reconstruction. And there's also an option to export the reconstruction as an SWC, which is a widely used format for representing neuronal structures. All right, so thanks for watching the video, and if you click the link in the description, it'll take you to the SNT page on imagej.net, which has a bunch of more tutorials and more documentation if you're interested. Thanks.